This video is for Module 7 of CS33, Introduction to Data Structures and Algorithms Part 2. So this is the second video out of four videos for the week where we will discuss about the easiest design strategy. It's sometimes called the brute force or the naive algorithm or the exhaustive search if the problem is a search problem. The brute force algorithm is the most straightforward approach to solving a problem. And if you understood the problem statement the and the output specification, you can just simply enumerate all the possible output uh, given in input instance. So um, the strength here is its simplicity and its applicability to different kinds of problems. However, a weakness naman niya is the running time efficiency and it's useful only for instances of relatively small size. So, bakit important pa rin na aralin natin ang design strategy na to? It's because sometimes the expense of designing a more efficient algorithm may be unjustifiable if only a few instances of a problem then needs to be solved and the brute force algorithm can solve those instances with acceptable speed. So sometimes, um, if we wanted to know the answer and iraran lang naman natin yung algorithm natin a few more times. Sometimes, mas mabilis pa rin yung waiting time to get the solution instead of designing an algorithm na faster for a particular problem. Even if um, very inefficient siya, in a very small size like n less than. Um, 10 or n equal to 3, even for exponential cases, pwede nating maantay yung sagot doon sa pag-run ng algorithm. It can also serve as an important theoretical or educational purpose as a yardstick with which to judge more efficient alternatives for solving a problem. So usually, if you have a problem, um, try to create or um, try to to describe the naive algorithm for that problem, try to implement it so that you will also know if you really understood the problem at the same time can also serve as a benchmark if you wanted to improve an algorithm for the problem. Um, for problems that are combinatorial in nature or the feasible solution are discrete sets, for example, like graph problems, um, these are all combinatorial problems. It's called the exhaustive search. Uh, this strategy is synonymous with the brute force that is to enumerate all possible solution candidates or all possible output and then check if they satisfy the problem statement or the properties indicated in the output specification and if needed, choose one solution from the set of the feasible ones. And then the key question here is how to ensure that we already check the possible um, candidate solutions. In this slide, we present a simple pseudocode for the exhaustive search. It starts with generating a first candidate solution. And then um, inside a while loop, you have a condition that checks if C is a valid solution. If it's a valid solution, then output. If it's not a valid solution, you need to generate the next candidate solution. So this loop will stop after generating all possible candidate solutions. Um, there are a lot of stopping criteria for this pseudocode or this design strategy. Um, the first stopping criteria is if ever nakahanap na siya ng first valid solution and then magi stop na ng algorithm. The second stopping criteria is if I can specify a number of valid solutions. Here, the specified number could be part of the input parameter and part of the problem definition. And then one um, one possible stopping criteria is testing a given number of candidates. Usually, uh, the given number of candidates here is the maximum number of candidates checked. 
Kasi sometimes napakarami nung kailangan mong i-verify na candidate solution. So, we can specify sa max number of candidate solutions. And then, the last possible stopping criteria is if ever nag-spend na yung algorithm mo um, ng too much resources or a given amount of CPU time, then you can stop this algorithm. If we use the two stopping criteria, hindi guaranteed na makakaguha tayo ng isang valid solution. First example, let's define the traveling salesman problem. So, as a real problem, suppose you wanted to create an itinerary given a list of cities that you wanted to visit and that itinerary should minimize the total distance covered. Combinatorially, of course, we can model the scenario using graphs by setting each vertex as the city and the edges as the distance between two cities. Since we can easily calculate the straight line distance between different cities, we can have a complete graph of size 4 um, in this example. So, in a formal definition of the problem, given n cities with known distances between each pair, find the shortest tour that passes through all the cities exactly once before returning to the starting city. So, equivalently, this is also the problem where we find the shortest Hamiltonian circuit in a weighted connected graph. Um, this example is an undirected graph but sometimes the route going from A to C isn't necessarily equal to the, the weight of the edge connecting C to A. So sometimes it's represented using an undirected, an undirected graph. Sometimes it's represented using a directed graph. In this example, it's an undirected graph so it's a lot simpler. Okay, so for the exhaustive search, we need to um, explore all possible candidate solution. And if we really understood the problem, uh, a tour represented using a permutation of the set of vertices. So for example, one permutation is A, B, C, and D, and then just append A in the last part since this is a complete graph. Okay? And then for each possible permutation of the vertices, we can of course compute the cost. So for example, um, the cost for the tour A, B, C, D, A is equivalent to um, 17 because um, A to B is 2, B to C is 3, C to D is 7, and then D to A is five okay. so for the exhaustive search we just need to assess each of the possible candidate solution compute the cost and output the cost with the minimum total distance okay. so for the um traveling salesman problem this could be uh the distance between two cities but of course we can also incorporate other distance metrics as well so sometimes um the edge cost could be flight uh, fare could be actual road distance using the road network or it could be time time delay from going from um, a to b so it depends on the objective of the traveling salesman problem but um, in general if you have an exhaustive search for this problem you can get the optimal solution since you simply exhaust all possible candidate solution okay? so in this case the optimal solution is 17 because this is 17 yung nakakuha ng minimum cost take note that the cost that we obtained by checking a b c d and a is actually equivalent to a b c d a okay so in backwards lang why because 
if we evaluate the graph, since this is undirected, um, we can get two tours that are equivalent in cost. So um, this one is equivalent uh, with respect to cost to this one, uh, this one to this one. So it's up to the algorithm to choose um, between the two optimal solution. So both of them are optimal pero magkaiba sila ng sequence of order. So again, um, since this is an exhaustive search and we need to check all possible permutation, um, if we recall yung um, count ng number of permutation given n items, this is actually equivalent to n factorial. Okay? Pero, um, we can still minimize something because in fact, we are actually um, getting the permutation of the three vertices here inside. So, n minus one vertices here inside. So, since this is a complete graph, both endpoints are the same vertex. So, in pwede lang natin i-appen si a. The first approach is to reduce the search space. The way how to do it is to localize the search to a specific portion where you have a high chance of getting the answer. So, by reducing the search space, hindi na lahat ng candidate solution kailangan madaanan. Um, what else? The second way of speeding up a brute force search is reordering the search space. So very common yung reordering the search space as you have observed in the previous algorithms presented in the course. So by reordering, we mean um, may pre-sorting na nagaganap before you do the search so to give you a concrete example, suppose I'm looking for a student X and I know that this particular student is a female. I can reduce the search space and look for a female student X dun sa pool lang ng female students. And then another example for speeding up the search is instead of looking at all um, chairs in a class, I can reorder the sitting arrangement according to the last name. So, um, by using that, I can reduce the search space. Hindi ko na kailangan daanan lahat. There's actually an algorithm for um, reducing the search space, and that is called local search. And then the second one, yung reordering the search space, I can use the binary search. Uh, as an improved version of the exhaustive search or brute force algorithm.